want you to hit me as hard as you can. Welcome to Real Action, where we pay tribute to some of the best action movies and action stars of all time. And that includes some that a few of you might not have heard of, but definitely should. One of those is my favorite ass-kicking lady ever, the original Atomic Blonde herself, and the first Western Hong Kong superstar, Cynthia Rothrock. And if she had a magnum opus, it's definitely 1990's China O'Brien. Let's do it. The 5'3 Rothrock was and still is a true badass. In the 1980s, she was an undefeated fighting champion, earning five black belts and more styles than I've got toes. But it was in Hong Kong that she decided to try her hand at acting and became an instant smash when she teamed with the great Michelle Yeoh in cop flick Yes Madam. She worked with all the greats at the time, from Gordon Liu to influential director Corey Yuen to Andy Lau and even Sammo Hung. She was an unlikely star in Hong Kong, appearing in some legit classics, including the underrated Above the Law, not to be confused with the Steven Seagal movie, co-starring famed Hong Kong superstar Yuen Bao. Often she would play villains in Hong Kong movies, but here she was a hero. But it was when her studio, Golden Harvest, decided to make Rothrock a star in America that things took off. Thanks for watching Real Action. If you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. China O'Brien, a clever play on Rothrock's Eastern Western backstory, was see her united with writer-director Robert Klaus, famous for directing Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon, and then later infamous for helping cobble together the Bruce Lee posthumous release of Game of Death which was so bad that we did a WTF Happened episode on it. China O'Brien is pure walking tall material and is actually inspired by the real life inspiration for that film, Buford Pusser. Rothrock plays a tough as nails, big city cop with killer kung fu that she teaches to her students, including Termite, whose attitude is simply unacceptable. Can't hack it, huh? That's too bad. All this fancy shit don't mean nothing on the streets. I'd like to see you against the bloods. When Termite challenges China to a real fight out in a dark alley, she accepts. Termite! Putting on a literal class in how to beat up street punks. Uh. Well, that was the multiple tax. If you have any questions, please see me later. But when Termite's life is actually threatened, China shoots and kills his attacker. Too distraught, she retires from the force and heads to her rundown hometown of Beaver Creek. Only to find that it's come under the ruinous sway of local businessman Summers. He's got everyone under his control including the mulleted deputy sheriff. And these guys are some real gems. When it's revealed that Summers keeps women held hostage for torture and rape, these guys just smile like it's just a normal everyday thing in Beaver Creek. And maybe it is. I'm gonna show these guys your ass. <laughs> yeah, they don't like China much here. And even though her father is the beloved town sheriff. When he's murdered by Summers in a car bomb so explosive it puts China in slow-mo agony, she teams up with her childhood sweetheart Matt, played by Aussie superstar Richard Norton, a veteran of multiple Rothrock flicks and the bad guy in the infamous Jim Cotta, also directed by Klaus, and the mysterious Native American Dakota, played by Keith Cook, to take the villain down. Oh and to run for sheriff to replace her father, naturally. It's been six years, right? Uh-huh. I'm back for a while. Good. You staying with your father? Uh-huh. I'll call you tonight. Okay! This day is twice saddened by the death of your lifelong friend, John O'Brien. 
When I watch China O'Brien now, I think about how it shares so many similarities to Roadhouse, which would be released a year later. The settings are very similar, but it's the mix of Eastern and Western philosophies that makes me wish a Rothrock Swayze team up could have happened. While the plot and the screenplay aren't great, China O'Brien features some excellent combat choreographed by Nigel Benz. This being Rothrock's earliest exposure to American audiences, it really is a showcase of everything that made her popular in the West. Not only is she extremely cute, but her looks are deceptive. She's freaking deadly as hell and one of the fastest fighters ever captured on camera. Klaus, who knew a thing or two about shooting for speed, made the most of Rothrock's skills, especially by putting her against much larger fighters. The best of Rothrock always had impeccable chemistry alongside the rough and tumble Norton, who literally goes through a pro wrestling exercise in one extensive gym fight, with suplexes, body slams, clotheslines, and more. Hey, this was the height of the rock and wrestling period, so you gotta play to what's hot. And then there's Cook, who is silky smooth and graceful, almost like a Van Damme in style. You can see the skills that would later land him the role of reptile in Mortal Kombat and then Sub-Zero in its sequel. <laughs> if there was a problem with China O'Brien, it's that it lacked a major physical threat. Summers was played by Steve Kirby, who was older and more of a schemer. He didn't fight at all, but had a bunch of goons at his disposal who mostly served as punching bags. The best of the the studio Golden Harvest put a lot of faith in China O'Brien. So much so that they had Klaus immediately shoot a sequel before the original even opened. Released a year later in 1989, the sequel would not only bring back Rothrock, but Norton and Cook as well. Uh, it, it, that was a little bit different as being the lead in the American pictures and it took until I think China O'Brien but then Lady Dragon and then when they realized that those movies were really successful and made a lot of money I was the lead pretty much after that. All my movies were making top money so I never I never felt inferior in the market. Together the films are considered cult classics and would take Rothrock's Hollywood career to some interesting places. Two years later she would be part of one of the oddest pairings ever, alongside Corey Haim in Fast Getaway and its 1994 sequel. She would also launch the Martial Law franchise and routine with Norton for Lady Dragon and battle the awesome Bolo Young in Tiger Claws. But I personally felt that Rothrock, nor China O'Brien for that matter, ever got the proper due. The film was unique for presenting a female action star who was more than just an ass-kicking machine she was smart, vulnerable, witty as hell, and had real feelings about things. She was not unlike some of the bigger female action characters of the time period, and perhaps so much attention was focused on them that she was overlooked. The Expendables came out, and I was like, how come I'm not in there? I should be in there. You have all these guys in there. Are you kidding me? Why am I not in there? Because I was the top female then, in, you know, in the 80s and 90s. But Cynthia Rothrock would be overlooked by me, nor will China O'Brien. It remains the highlight of a career that burned hot for a while before burning out. Rothrock seems to be generating a little extra notoriety these days, as with the advent of the female front action flick, a lot of people are realizing that Rothrock really did it all first. 
Netflix should do us all a solid and buy Rothrock's library of action flicks and give them a solid launch. Heck, there are a lot of kung fu stars from the direct-to-video market from the 80s and 90s that never got their due, including Don the Dragon Wilson, Gary Daniels, Sasha Mitchell, Daniel Bernhardt, now one of the biggest stunt choreographers in the world thanks to John Wick and Nobody, Thomas Ian Griffith, and even Billy Blanks, who kicked a lot of ass before he ever started Tybo. My hope remains that Rothrock will turn up in the Expendables or something somewhere down the line. Two hours ago, the First Order's convoy was hit by militants. You got 48 hours to begin actions against my enemies. <sighs> Come to me, girls. But if not, I'll always have this. <laughs> See that? She'd want them chop suey fighters. China O'Brien gets 8 out of 10 Stallones. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all of your support.